Hey guys, welcome to another JavaScript challenge. And in this challenge, we're going to be looking for the first word with a greatest number of repeated letters. So let's say we're going to be passing the string into our function, and then we're going to have to find the word that has the greatest number of repeated letters, and we will going to be returning the first one. So let's say even though there might be two words with a greatest number of repeated letters, we will return the first one. Those are the rules. So as you can see right now, I have my count letters function, and I'm just passing here. JavaScript is the greatest language. So why don't we start working on that? As always, I think the best part would be creating a new variable. I'm going to call this temp array, and we're going to use a split method. So I'm going to write, okay, string split. Then I would want to split it everywhere where we have the space. And why don't we right away also return the temporary just so we can see what's happening. So as we can clearly see, we're getting the array with a bunch of items, which are our words. Now, next one would be actually working with a map method, because what I would like to do is to return a new array where each and every word, in fact, will going to be an object. And in that object, we're going to have a few properties, one that's going to be counting the max word. Then there's also going to be the property that's actually going to show what the name is of the word, as well as we're just going to show rest of the letters. So why don't we do that? So we're going to write here. Okay, so temp array will be equal to temp array. Then we're going to use the map method like so. And you know what? I do need to move this up because I'm already returning it anyway. And then each and every item, we're going to actually show the word that we have in the array. And first, what I would like to do is, in fact, split each and every word as well. So what we're going to do is let temp item will be equal to item, and we're going to split it. So there's going to be one more array. However, in this case, we're going to be splitting this up in not in spaces, so not in between the words, but in fact, for each and every letter. And then next, we're going to run the return. Now, in this case, though, when we're going to be returning is the reduce method. So I'm going to write, okay, so temp item, and now we're going to use the reduce method. Because what we need to understand that right now, this temp item is an array. Now, array with all the letters that we have right now within actually this word. Now, what we can also maybe do right away, uh, item split, and maybe before we split it, we can maybe say to lowercase. Let's see how this is going to work out. So we can say, okay, so first we would want to lowercase, and then we're going to split it. Now, maybe why don't we return the item just so we can see what's happening. So temp item, and this should return me a bunch of arrays. And like I said, for each and every array, and this is just going to be a bunch of letters that I have. So let's say for the JavaScript, these are going to be my letters. All right. Now, since I know that this is an array, like I said, we can use the reduce method. For the reduce method, what we're looking for? Well, we have two parameters. We have accumulator and the current one. Now, accumulator is going to be what we're going to be returning. And the current one will be obviously current item in the iteration. And now we need to decide, well, what we're going to be returning. So why don't we create a curly braces? And then I'm going to say, all right, so I will going to be returning the object. Now within the object, I'm going to right away set up the property by the name of max. And I'm going to set this equal to one, as well as I'm going to set it word. So there will be a word property. Now this will be equal to an item like so. As always, we need to remember that with accumulator or with reduce in general, we always, always need to return the accumulator. If you're not going to do that, you're not going to be able to see it. So what do you see right now? So we have a array. Then at the moment, each and every array item has the object, obviously. And then we have the max property, which is equal to one. And then also the word property, which just signals what is the name. However, what we would like to do right now is do a little bit of magic. We're going to say, okay, so we're getting right now each and every item as an array. But what we can do is we can say, okay, 
accumulator current. So if on this object is already a property and the property will going to be actually a letter. If it is there, then we're just going to add one more. If it's not, then we're going to create one. So I'm going to say, okay, so accumulate a current. And remember, current will going to be each and every letter that we just split it up. So I'm going to write, okay, so accumulating current. If you are there, if the property on the object will going to be there, then we will just going to add one number to it. Otherwise, we're going to create it. So I'm going to say, okay, accumulator current. So letter there will be plus one. So we're going to create a new one if it does not exist. All right. So this is what we're doing. So in this case, what's happening again, as we save it, notice right now, I will going to have my JavaScript and this is going to say, all right, so a was first time one, but the second time we already added one because what we're doing is we are creating the properties dynamically right now on the object that we're returning because accumulator will be object as we're returning and current, as you can see, we're passing here dynamically as a property. And what I'm saying is if that property is already on the object, so this is where we're using ternary operator, then we are adding one. So this is the reason why for a we're getting number two. But let's say if it does not exist, we just create one. However, I would also want to affect this max property that I have right now. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to say, all right, so right after I create the property on the object, I would want to check. And I would want to say, all right, so if this property is actually bigger than what I have currently max, so the value for the current letter is actually bigger than I have on the max. And by the way, on the max, I have always one. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the value of the max equal. And this will going to be equal to a current one, of course, because let's say for a, it's going to check. Okay, so a has a value of two. So now instead of max having a value of one, it will going to have value of two. Now let's save that. And again, this is what we're going to see. We're going to see that. All right, so max has two because it gets pretty much value of an a letter and a obviously has the value of two. Now, in order maybe to see a little bit better, why don't we add, let's say, three E's. And then we're going to see that for the last one, the language, this should be max of three, because now we can see that E actually has the value of three. OK, so this is going to set up everything where we have array of objects. And now the last thing is, in fact, very simple, where once we have the array of objects, now I just want to do a for loop where I would want to check which object has the bigger value for the max, as well as then we're going to set it up that that will be the word that we're returning. Now, in this case, we're going to say, all right, so there will going to be a property of amount or variable of amount. That variable will be equal to one. And then we're going to write let word will be equal to an empty string. So this will be our setup. And now let's do a simple for loop. We're going to write or for off where we're going to be looping over the temp array. So each and every item will going to be just an item. This is going to be the variable and we're going to say temp array. So as we're looping over this array, I would want to check if the item max will going to be bigger than the amount, which, by the way, is going to be one. Then I'm going to set the word equal to whatever I have within the word property. So the way this is going to work, I'm going to say, all right, so item max, if the item max is bigger than the value that I have on amount, which by the way is one, then we're going to set it up that amount value will going to be equal to item max like so. And we also are going to change the word because at the moment we just have the empty string. So I'm going to write word will be equal to item word like so. And last but not least, I would need to figure it out. If this amount will be bigger than one, then I would want to return the word. Because at the moment, I know that if the amount will be equal to one, then this is just going to stay as an empty string. And if this is an empty string, that means that none of the words have repeating letters. So we're just going to return, let's say, negative one. So I can say, okay, by default, I'm going to return negative 
one. But if we're going to check and we're going to say if amount is bigger than one, that means that one of the items in the array actually had a max property that was bigger than one. And then we set equal actually word to that item. Okay. So we're going to say if amount is bigger than one, then let's just return word. Otherwise, we're going to be returning negative one. And what we see here is obviously the language because we added a bunch of ease. This is the reason why we're returning it as a longest word. Now, if I'm going to get rid of that, like I said, we're going to be returning the first one because in this case, JavaScript has two of them that are repeating. And this is the first letter, of course. So this is how we can solve this challenge.